Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of Scott Selections here on Thursday, August 1st. I'm aware that this video is going to be a little bit different than normal videos, as I've already given out the play of the day on the Denver Broncos and Atlanta Falcons game. But I said in that video, and if you haven't looked, haven't uh, watched it yet, check it out. I mentioned in that video that I will be providing you with a separate video on some tips on what I usually look for in preseason betting in order to find some value in the NFL preseason. And if you like the idea of this, I might give this out in future uh, videos, whether it's college basketball or whether it's honestly NBA Summer League, something like that, where I'll just explain what my logic is in terms of finding value on specific matchups. But with the NFL preseason finally upon us, I felt like it was a good time to explain what I look for in specific matchups, as well as to just showcase that there is value on betting exhibition games, regardless of what the general public might think. And the first uh, tip I will be giving out here, some of these might sound like common sense, but I will go into greater detail when explaining uh, some, some specific examples as to when this plays a factor. The first uh, tip will be on keeping an eye on injuries as well as healthy scratches. Since these are exhibition games, a lot of teams will be resting key players, rightfully so. However, the same can be said about some backup quarterbacks in some situations or even backup players if they are dealing with injuries. Uh, specifically, cluster injuries are very important, and when I say that, I refer to a lot of injuries at one position. So, for example, let's just say hypothetically the Cincinnati Bengals have three of their six cornerbacks on the roster injured. That means that you should probably bet against them because of the fact that they will be replacing those three with, uh, honestly, sixth or seventh stringers who probably have no business being on an NFL preseason roster. Keep in mind that the injuries at key positions are very important. The offensive line is very important. If you end up having three injuries to the tackles, then you are going to see a lot more quarterback pressures because of the replacements being a lot worse than the original projected starters. So that's just something to keep in mind. Same thing can be said about healthy scratches, how in the last preseason game, for example, everyone knows that nobody plays, and that's why the unders in the week four of preseason tend to be very popular because of the fact that a lot of people don't play. Same can be said about the first couple of games in specific circumstances. However, one thing that you will find out is the lack of quality information online, specifically because of the fact that a lot of teams simply will tell you who is going to be sitting or not, but they'll usually tell you right before the actual game itself, and you will not be able to find that out until you know, about an hour or so before the game. So my advice to you is to search it up on Twitter. Twitter tends to be my favorite source in order to find out this type of information on who is going to be inactive, who's going to be active. They will tell you, unlike regular season games, until the last minute, but it's also difficult to find out that information. So you should simply be searching it up on Twitter. Look for keywords, look for teams, look for injury updates, look for just the active rosters going into the game, and you should be able to find out that information roughly 30 minutes to an hour before the opening of the game. So you might bet some of these lines late, but if that involves you getting quality information, then I definitely think it is worth the wait, so to speak. That, anyway, so the first tip is to keep an eye on injuries as well as healthy scratches to try to see who exactly will be playing. Never assume anything in the preseason until you actually see it in writing that specific people will be playing. The last thing you want to do is bet on a player or bet on a team because you think that their starting quarterback is going to be playing, and it turns out he is not, and then you have to wait and rely on on the backup quarterbacks instead, and that is a terrible feeling, so that's just something to keep in mind. The second uh, tip is something that you should keep in mind in any type of bet you're making, regardless of whether it's preseason, but is especially valuable in preseason, which is the value of line movement. Now, since this is preseason games, assume that most of the money, if not all of the money coming in, is going to be sharp money. You simply put, the public is going to want to bet on baseball, even maybe some basketball here and there when it's on or just bet on anything, to be honest. But the idea of the general public betting on exhibition football games is not that popular. Week 1, maybe. Hall of Fame game, maybe, because of the fact that, you know, they're just itching to see some more football. But when you get to week 2 of the preseason, the general public does not really care. And if you see a ton of line movement on a game, for example, if you see a team go from minus 1 to minus 4.5, there tends to be a lot of sharp money involved. And I definitely rely on line movement as one of my main, uh, you know, things that I look for in a, uh, handicapping a specific matchup. And I think that the game tonight, 
is a great example of that with the Broncos and the Falcons. Broncos open up at plus one. They're up to roughly two and a half and even minus three in some spots. Definitely is a sign that a lot of money is coming on Denver, and I definitely think that they should win the game. I look for a lot of line movement. Totals also are the same. If you see a lot of money coming in on the over or the under, and you see it go from roughly 35 to 38, I'd lean to the over. That's definitely a lot of sharp money, and I definitely think you should be looking at that and factoring that in when you end up making some bets on some preseason matchups. Now, the third tip that I'm going to be giving you is position battles. I mentioned that in the video that I made earlier on the Broncos and Falcons, and I'd recommend looking uh, at that video as well. But position battles, simply put, motive, uh, it's going to be very important for roster spots as it could be the potential end of some players and their NFL futures. Look for open roster spots and people that are competing for those roster spots because they are going to be fully motivated for this game and definitely look as the coaching staffs will be giving them added reps to try to see who is worthy of potentially making the active roster. So, for example, if you see a quarterback battle in the second or the third uh, slot on the depth chart in the regular season, that doesn't mean anything because the starter will be playing pretty much all the snaps. However, in the preseason, the starter will never play. So definitely keep in mind the second string and the third string quarterbacks, or even the fourth string, trying to compete for a third string spot. As the third string quarterback usually plays the majority of the second half, which is where a lot of bets either are won or lost in preseason. So if you see a quarterback battle taking place between the second and the third string quarterback, those tend to be bet on teams as you will be looking at both those quarterbacks to get added reps and to try to play extremely well as they try to outplay one another as the coaching staff will look to give them more opportunities to shine, so to speak, as the coaching staff will try to shore up the depth on that respective position in for the regular season roster. Same can be said about defensive backs, offensive linemen, honestly anything. It's not just quarterbacks. If there is a potential position where there's uncertainty with the coaching staff on who should be getting the roster spot, I'd recommend betting on that team because they have a lot of options and each of those players should be playing a decent amount and they will be motivated to perform well. So that is my third tip for the NFL preseason. And my fourth tip, the final tip for the NFL preseason, is on motivation, specifically regarding the coaches. Some coaches, if you look at track records, do not care whatsoever if the team wins or loses in the preseason, where other teams care a lot and try to win every game. Two examples, the an example of a coach you should bet on in the preseason is Mike Zimmer, the Falcons head, uh, the uh, the Vikings head coach, I should say. He tries to win every single preseason game that he is in, and if you look at his recent years in the preseason, he tends to go 3-1 and one or better. He tries to lay it all on the line. He wants his players to compete and to win uh, early on in the preseason, and the, and the Vikings are a team I'll usually back pretty much every time in the preseason as they tend to attract a lot of sharp money, and they tend to come away with victories as Mike Zimmer wants to see good showings from his uh, backups, and they tend to be a team that you should look to bet on in the preseason, whereas a team you should look to fade pretty much every time in the preseason is the Pittsburgh Steelers with Mike Tomlin. If you look at his track record in the preseason, it is awful, and the Steelers rarely win many preseason games. They usually go 1-3, and 2-2. Two and two. Look for them to struggle again in the preseason. Another example is uh, Sean Payton for the Saints, tend not to do very well in the preseason, mostly because they are resting key pieces like Drew Brees, who never plays in the preseason. But they tend to rely on the backup quarterbacks to give some quality performances. But the Saints generally don't care much about the preseason, and you should expect that. That's one thing to keep in mind. Good or regular season coaches do not equal good preseason coaches in the sense of a betting perspective. Just because Bill Belichick's the greatest coach of all time arguably does not mean that he is the best preseason coach as the Patriots tend to kind of, I don't want to say mail it in, but they don't really care about the preseason either as they rely mostly on just trying to keep people healthy. Whereas other coaches like Mike Zimmer, as well as um, Pete Carroll, for example, with Seattle, he's also a very good preseason coach. Some coaches just look to see more from their second, from their second string guys, and you should look to bet on those coach, those teams. So my advice to you: look at recent years on ESPN and look at the standings and the uh, schedule 
in preseason recent years just to get a good gauge of who you should trust. But some coaches who are good in the regular season are awful in the preseason, and you should look to fade those teams in the upcoming couple of weeks. But other than that, uh, those are the four tips. I'll run through them once again. First tip is injuries and healthy scratches. Keep tabs of those. Use Twitter to try to get last-minute updates. Second tip is a line movement. Try to see who Sharp Money is coming in on and bet on those teams respectively. The third is position battles. Look for some uncertainty in the depth chart and try to bet on those teams to see who will be getting added minutes. Of course, that's within reason also. If you see an awful quarterback who's going to be getting added minutes in the third or fourth string, bet against them. Uh, fourth thing is motivation. Uh, look at coaching staffs. Try to see recent years on how they perform. And overall, those are the four picks that should the four tips that should help you succeed in preseason betting. Other than that, let's continue with this installment of Scott Selections here for Thursday, uh, August first. And good luck to all of you and your respective bets today. Bye, everyone.